Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 1134 of the Juice Box Podcast. On today's podcast, Jake Leach is back from Dexcom. He's going to talk about Dexcom G7. You guys asked a bunch of questions. I asked them of Jake. And he's here to tell us about a new product called the Dexcom Stello. I said, hello, Stello. But he said that was not the marketing campaign. I thought it was amazing. Whatever. Uh, while you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. When you place your first order for AG1 with my link, you'll get five free travel packs and a free year supply of vitamin D. Drink ag1.com slash juicebox. Don't forget to save 40% off of your entire order at cozyearth.com. All you have to do is use the offer code juicebox at checkout. That's juicebox at checkout to save 40% at cozyearth.com. If you're looking for community around type 1 diabetes, check out the Juicebox Podcast private Facebook group. Juice Box Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes. But everybody is welcome. Type 1, Type 2, Gestational, Loved Ones, it doesn't matter to me. US Med is sponsoring this episode of the Juice Box Podcast, and we've been getting our diabetes supplies from US Med for years. You can as well. USMed.com slash juice box or call 888 721 1514. Use the link. Or the number, get your free benefits check, and get started today with U.S. Med. Today's episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by the Contour Next Gen Blood Glucose Meter. This is the meter that my daughter has on her person right now. It is incredibly accurate and waiting for you at contournext.com slash juicebox. And though Dexcom is not sponsoring this episode, you can use my link in the show notes to find out more about Dexcom. What in the hell? Alarms are going off. Everybody run. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. The alarm was just to remind me to make a phone call. Jake, I appreciate you coming on. I know we're short on time. I have a lot of questions here. Do you mind if I jump right in? Good. Let's do it, Scott. Okay. Is it pronounced Stello like hello? It is. Stello. You got it. Okay. Is it just for type twos? Can people with prediabetes get it? What about other biohacking stuff? Like where is it going to fall in the market? Yeah, so we're super excited uh, about the Stello product. It's specifically designed for people with type 2 diabetes that are not taking insulin. And there's some very specific reasons for that. It's really around the product features and the needs that it's trying to address for users. Um, we can go into those. Um, but, uh, you know, it's there's uh, 25 million people out there in the U.S. that have type 2 that do not treat their diabetes with insulin. And so it's really targeted. There's not great availability of CGMs for that population. And so that's really what we're going after. It's specifically designed for their needs. Uh, is you know, built on the same performance and accuracy reliability of Dexcom CGM, but has a new uh, mobile app um, that is completely redesigned for that user group. Why do people in this category needs something different than what you already make? Why did, why, what was the necessity for a different product? Yeah. So, um, the, there's a couple of different ways to look at it, but one of the most important ones is that, um, this is, this population is, is not at risk of hypoglycemia. There's, you know, the really important components of our G7 product and G6 and previous generations of that G series, uh, that has the predictive low glucose alerts, the low glucose alerts, the urgent low, the 55, all of that technology was developed about keeping people safe from hypoglycemia. Mm -hmm. This group of people with type 2 that aren't using insulin um, and also don't have uh, a risk of hypoglycemia, that's what this product is designed for. So it doesn't have those alerts. The way we think about it is it, it has all the information and insights without the interruptions of alerts. They don't need those. And so it's a much simpler product. Um, you know, when I know someone who is using uh, G7 and isn't taking insulin and doesn't have hypoglycemia challenges, I basically say, turn off all those alerts, get off, turn them off. And, you know, the urgent low, you can't turn off, yeah. but all the rest of them, you can. I just said, turn them off because you don't want, you don't want those, um, you know, nuisance alarms happening. So if there's a person who's type two right now wearing G7, for example, and they do get low for whatever reason, maybe they're, I don't know, who cares why, will they be forced 
to be to go on to Stello by insurance needs, or no, they'll be able to stay with what they have. Yeah, if you're if you're covered, if you're you know G seven, if you have coverage for G seven, um, that's not going to change. Coverage for G seven is really strong across all and multiple daily injections, insulin pump therapies, uh, basal insulin, and then there is some coverage for people who are in this category that you know they don't have hypoglycemia challenges. Um, they're not on insulin, um, but they're using CGM. And so we actually did a, a published a study of 7,200 of our users that went on to G6 and used it to really increase, the, increase their time and range. But they were all people with type 2 diabetes that were not treating it with insulin. They happened to be able to get access to the device since so they were using it. And so, uh, but, you know, they're basically using G7. They've got the real-time data, but Stello is going to be a much better product for that that group. So is there an accuracy difference between Stello and G7? No, it's exactly the same level of performance, um, uh, accuracy, reliability. It uh, is the first 15-day sensor oh, okay. um, that we're um, launching. And so it has 15-day wear. It's on the G7 uh, platform in terms of hardware, but it's branded different um, and it has that completely different uh, mobile app. The way we think about it is accuracy is extremely important to um, anyone who's monitoring glucose, whether they're, uh, you know, they're treating their in, uh, diabetes with insulin, uh, maybe they're not, um, or even, you know, when you think about health and wellness, it's so important for CGMs to be accurate. Yeah. You can easily be misled to think you have a metabolic disorder if the CGM is off by even a little bit. Sure. So does this mean we're going to get a 15-day wear G7? That's the goal. Yeah, we're, we're working on a 15-day wear G7 as well. Uh, we're actually doing clinical trials right now uh, on some enhanced technology on the sensor probe in particular to ensure we get the low level of reliability we want out to 15 days. We have a very high bar for performance and reliability out to the uh, total sensor wear time. And so we take that very seriously because we know that our customer satisfaction has a lot to do with the performance and reliability of our sensors. And knowing that we want to make sure that the the duration is truly the full 15 days and not um, something, uh, you know, less yeah. than that. Plus what you just talked about, about being safe in lower numbers and, and having that accuracy down there is really important. All right. Will they need a prescription? It sounds like yes. Yeah. Right, right now, you know, all CGMs in the United States, FDA has declared their, their prescription devices. And so the idea is, um, you know, you need the performance, you need the accuracy, accuracy reliability. But yeah, they're, they're prescription devices until the FDA decides they're not. Is the biohacking market big enough for you guys to be interested in? And does this product put you closer to that? It's a great question. Um, I do. Uh, we, we definitely feel that there is, um, you know, a really large opportunity outside of diabetes for CGM and metabolic health um, and generally healthy living. You think about prediabetes. The Stello product is specifically designed for this group of type 2 users that don't have great access to CGM, and we really want to build a product for them. And, and you know, it's, it's a large group of people that could significantly benefit from having real-time CGM data. And so that's what we're focused on. Yeah, it puts us closer towards, towards the group um, and, you know, as we go down that acuity curve. But we felt like this is a group that doesn't have a product designed for them today. Um, and that's why we basically focused on on that. Oh, my brother, I'm going to call him as soon as this is over. I've been able to give him a sensor once in a while. And the difference it makes in his life with type two is insane. And but his insurance won't help him get a CGM at this moment with type two because he doesn't use insulin. Our goal is to basically generate whatever evidence is required so that we can ultimately get coverage for this population because they're the, you're right. The benefits are so clear. Yeah. Many folks, you know, that aren't taking insulin are, you know, haven't ever really monitored their blood glucose. And so they have no idea how it changes throughout the day. I was talking to someone recently who had started using CGM, is in this category, has type 2, recently diagnosed type 2, and didn't really, you know, just was told over time that their A1C numbers were creeping up. But he was told, you know, eat healthier, exercise more and more activity. But it, it's not particularly helpful information. Um, but when, you know, he got access to a CGM and started using it, he learned so much about how his diet was impacting his glucose. And he just started making all kinds of, not, not dramatic, he didn't like go, you know, keto or anything. He just made some some subtle changes that was really impactful to his average glucose. You know, yeah. his average glucose was around 150. And he's, you know, been working it down to the point where, 
you know, hopefully he's going to lower his A1C, you know, below six and a half and get, get out of the diabetes zone. Do you see this as a constant wear item or do you think it could be educational for them and then they might not need it after that? I think everyone's going to be different. I think there's going to be a lot of different use cases as we go to this this broader population. I think, you know, for me, when I think about Stello and, and the importance of the product, one of the things that's really important is to make it extremely engaging so that people engage with the data. Basically, there, there's a, a component of it significant up front that's going to be around education and continuing to understand how different foods do impact, you know, a particular individual. But then there's also the component about reinforcing positive behavior, right? I mean, you can basically, when you see your data, you see your average glucose is really in, in line. Um, it's a con- constant reminder of, boy, you're really doing well. Let's keep doing that. I think a lot of people are going to wear it continuously. We see like when uh, we've used the product uh, in these populations where we've seen uh, users that are a- having access to CGM today that are in this group of users that don't take insulin, they do want to keep using it. The, the wear times are very consistent, even with what we see in our insulin users. So yeah. I do think there's a significant demand out there for this type of product, and the benefits are pretty clear. And CGM is a very cost-effective tool for you know managing the overall cost of somebody that has diabetes. And so we really feel that um, there's an opportunity here to, over time, get, get this product reimbursed. But at first, it's going to be cash pay um, at a very um, affordable, competitive price um, out there in the market. So the pricing will be different than like if I tried to cash buy G7? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be different. It's a different product. Um, it'll be different. Um, we have we're not releasing any details exactly around it until we launch. But um, the 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 goal of this product is to make it accessible to as many people as possible. Launch. You're hoping for mid year 2024. Yeah, summertime. Yeah, summertime. We, we, so it's under review by the FDA right now. We submitted it last year. Um, reviews going great. As soon as we get an approval, we'll start. You know, we're, we're already working through the stages of getting ready for launch. Yeah, we plan to launch it this summer. Is that review mostly aimed at the app and the I mean, because if the device is the same as G7, then what's there to review? Far too often, we accept the blood glucose meter that someone hands to us. The doctor reaches into a drawer and goes, here, take this one. That, is, that, is that the one you want? Is it accurate? You have no way of knowing. But if you want accuracy and you want to be confident in the blood glucose readings that you're getting from your meter, you want the Contour Next Gen. It's incredibly easy to get the same meter that Arden uses. Just go to contournext.com slash juice box. That's all you have to do. The Contour Next Gen is easy to use and highly accurate. It features a smart light that provides a simple understanding of your blood glucose levels. And of course, second chance sampling technology that can help you to save money with fewer wasted strips. Contournext.com slash juice box. I used to hate ordering my daughter's diabetes supplies. I never had a good experience, and it was frustrating. But it hasn't been that way for a while, actually for about three years now, because that's how long we've been using U.S. Med. usmed.com slash juice box, or call 888-721-1514. U.S. Med is the number one distributor for Freestyle Libre Systems nationwide. They are the number one specialty distributor for Omnipod Dash, the number one fastest growing tandem distributor nationwide, the number one rated distributor in Dexcom customer satisfaction surveys. They have served over 1 million people with diabetes since 1996, and they always provide 90 days worth of supplies and fast and free shipping. U.S. Med carries everything from insulin pumps and diabetes testing supplies to the latest CGMs like the Libre 3 and Dexcom G7. They accept Medicare nationwide and over 800 private insurers. Find out why U.S. Med has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau at usmed.com slash juicebox, or just call them at 888-721-1514. Get started right now, and you'll be getting your supplies the same way we do. You're right. It's a, it's a, Simpler uh, review uh, because there isn't as much. G7 was a massive review for us because we changed so much of the product. It is extending it out to 15 days. So we did a clinical study to show uh, ICGM level performance all the way out to 15 days. So there's clinical data review. Um, and then there is a lot of it is the user interface and the human factors. I mean, one of the important things here is for people who get access to this product, understand that if they're on insulin, they should have G7. They shouldn't have this product. This product is really for those that don't aren't at risk for hypoglycemia. 
that's one of the, the important factors. But yeah, they're basically doing that review. So we're hoping for a swift approval and being able to launch the summer. Do you have any concern that if it's so much cheaper in cash and people can't get covered for G7, that type ones will use it and then not have the safety net of that low alert? It's a great question, Scott. Something we, we um, you know, kind of discuss and, and organized around internally. So it's coverage for G7, when you think about out-of-pocket costs, is really good in the United States if you have coverage, right? So if you have coverage, it's the lowest out-of-pocket cost CGM uh, available. Yeah. Um, on average, you know, a third of our users pay nothing. Um, and then, you know, the average copay is less than $40. If someone does get access to it, um, it is very accurate and reliable from a glucose reading perspective. So I think in that case, you know, you've got a safety safety factor there. But if anyone is using insulin, G7 is really the right right product for them because it has those those safety features. But I think in general, having access to glucose readings is better than nothing. Yeah. So in general, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why the performance and accuracy is so important, even for this type of product, is that you you really people need accurate and reliable data. Yeah, it feels like to me the difference between what obviously the FDA has set up is you know guardrails for keeping people using insulin safe. And that's great for the population, but for one-on-one people who are stuck, I agree with something's better than nothing. So it's it's interesting. Is this going to cover for pre-diabetes, do you think? The, when I think about products, I think about the user groups and uh, designing it for their uh, intended needs. I think there's quite a bit of overlap between people who have pre-diabetes and those that um, have been diagnosed with diabetes. There is a lot of overlap there, but I, I do feel like our, our main focus right now is all about this group of type two, type twos. but you know, we're going to, we're going to continue to evolve. I mean, we're planning a pretty rapid pipeline of enhancements to this product based on, you know, things that we already have in, in the hopper in terms of a release train that we want to get out uh, features for Stello, but also based on what we learn once we launch it, right. Getting this product out in, in a large number of people's hands, getting the customer feedback. We've always, you know, we strive to make sure that all the user feedback gets filtered back into the team. And then we uh, develop, you know, we make feature enhancements based on user feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, that's primarily that's what primarily drives both the features we implement and the timeframes for which we do it. That's uh, um, going to be an exciting kind of release train. And so, I, you know, as over time, we, we do feel like there's lots of opportunities yeah. uh, to help people, you know, live healthier, lower their average glucose, better me- metabolic health. It's all good. I, I just think that, you know, I just had an experience with a family member who wanted to get a GLP and their A1C was 0.1 off of being technically having diabetes oh. the doctor literally told her just get your a1c a little higher and come back and i can get it for you i was like well is this what we're doing no <laughs> you that, know? that the kind some of the yeah but the way the healthcare systems work and and things it, it, sometimes that is uh, unfortunate that you end up in a situation having to you know make decisions like that yeah it's crazy besides the feedback that comes from the audience all the time about how grateful they are and stuff like that there was just one person who said, could you please do more advocating with insurance for other people who would need CGMs? They used as an example, adrenal insufficiency. Mm -hmm. That's a thing that's not covered. And I guess what they're saying is if you're ever in a meeting, could you just yell out that too for other people who experience low blood sugars, but don't fall into these categories? I uh, yeah, completely agree. I think, you know, um, one of the things when we advocated around basal coverage with Medicare, we did push very hard for that hypoglycemic uh, the people who have hypoglycemia incidents or at risk that aren't on insulin, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that group is covered under Medicare, and we're working to try and get better coverage by private payers for anybody who has risk of hypoglycemia. Okay, because we yeah we fully understand it. it, it, it G seven is a great tool for that group. Getting better insurance coverage is is really important. So Jake, as you may imagine, when I reached out to the audience for questions about Stello, I also got G seven questions. Of course. Is there anything else about Stello or before I hit you with these these questions? The only thing I'd say is um you know people often ask why we why we name it Stello and so that that word um it it in in Italian um it means stem and it really stands for growth and resilience and progress and that's the way we think about how this you know our hopes for it is that it, it provides that type of support and benefit to people with type 2. So it's a it's an exciting name. It, I don't know naming a, a product. It always there's a lot of things that go into that, but it was a really fun journey to to land on it. I just assumed you wanted to have commercials that said "Hello, Stello," and so I, I didn't think there was much more than that to it. But it's nice to know there's something else to it. That's what I was seeing. 
<laughs> All right, ready? I'm just going to start. I'm going to start big and then go lower. Usually I would do it the other way, but no reason to tease it out. There's only 10 more minutes in the episode. So Omnipod 5 and G7. Yeah. Time yeah, frame yeah. that you know about? Anything you're willing to say? Hint at? Cough twice? Yeah, it's the same basically as what um, Insulet has said. They're they're tracking well. You know, we've done all the validation work. And so we're excited for it to to come as quick as possible. So, okay. When people ask me, I tell them, I'm like, that's a Omnipod question. It's not a Dexcom question. But if I don't ask you, I'll, I'll get a, you know, there'll be, <laughs> yeah, there'll be pitchforks. So G7 has been out for a little while now. Yeah. Has there been any or are there any plan changes or improvements that have happened or are happening? Yeah, there's there's quite a bit, actually. We, we've uh, behind the scenes with any new product when you launch it. You've got things that were in the pipeline um, that you wanted to implement and, uh, you know, you launch it and you continue to implement those enhancements. Um, and also based on, you know, user feedback and as we see the product performing, we're really happy with how G7 launch has gone globally. Uh, and we've made quite a few enhancements. Some of the examples would be as we enhance, we, we put a feature in uh, the Bluetooth called Rapid Reconnect. And so what now your G7 does, and we're basically shipping this in all channels now, um, this enhanced Bluetooth. There may be a little bit of inventory out there in different channels where you're, there's still a little bit of the older version, but this new version is basically, it advertises every minute a reconnection to the phone. So if you ever do lose connection over Bluetooth, it, it will advertise every five minutes. So it catches back up very quickly. We also enhanced the Bluetooth performance uh, of the radio and the antenna. And so that uh, antenna performance produces a longer range. Mm -hmm. Really excited about that. So those two kind of went together uh, into the, the G7. We also have an updated uh, adhesive patch um, that we're putting in. It's the same patch that's on Stello. And so that is cutting its way into G7 and will begin shipping uh, in different channels over time here uh, quickly. And so that that uh, gives it enhanced wear time uh, in terms of just a little bit stickier, um, gets you out to the... To, um, those that have challenges getting out to 10 and a half days with the patch, this, this should really help them. Just call the supplier and yell stickier. Is that how that works? <laughs> no, 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 man. It's like, uh, it's you know, thing, it, I know. It's, uh, there's so much that goes into uh, adhesives, particularly around, you know, the durability of them, but also breathability and your irrit potential irritations and irritants and things in there. There's a whole lot that we do before we make a change. Yeah, that's a whole new project. Is there a world where you'll get to a, a more sensitivity? friendly adhesive that still holds on or does that technology just not exist no it does i mean we've we've uh, over time made um quite a bit of enhancements we did it on g6 where we actually had a patch that it lasted longer uh, but also had less irritation than we did with the previous and g7 made another step where uh irritation was lower with g7 than it was with g6 in the studies we ran particularly we actually ran studies in people that are we had known sensitivities to medical adhesive just to to better understand how much better G7 was. And so this new patch is even uh, better than that. So it's it's a, you know, the, the technology continues to evolve. Uh, and so I think we're going to continue to see, you know, better technology, better adhesives. We're always, you know, trying to to look for the best that's out there and develop it ourselves as well. And we're not stopping. I mean, we, we got to keep making these products uh, the best we can possibly produce. So I know you guys work hard and I don't think you just mindlessly forget something so when i ask you how come i don't see direct to watch or where's delta change and stuff like that how does that like how do things get prioritized i guess yeah it's a great question we could cover direct to watch too because there's some exciting news there main thing is we prioritize it based on user feedback and what we feel you know based on the the product development team what we're capable of producing in a certain amount of time, like how, how we spend our time and what the prioritization based on user feedback is. And so Direct to Watch has been a great example of something that has been highly desirable for a very long time. And uh, we've been working on it at a very uh, strong, dedicated team focused on developing that. And we, we finally got to the point where we're comfortable with that Apple ecosystem that when you switch to Direct to Watch mode, your sensor communicating directly to the Apple Watch. Without the phone in the communication loop, uh, we're very comfortable that you get all the glucose alerts you need to get because that has now taken over as your, num your, your main display device where you're getting those critical alerts. Mm -hmm. That has been what a big part of the journey uh, over multiple years is getting to the point where we are confident that that system will always produce those alerts when needed. 
work closely with Apple on it. They're really helpful uh, in making changes to the um, Apple Watch uh, operating system to be able to, to make this happen. And so we did submit that to the FDA last year, and we do plan to launch it here as soon as it's approved. So yeah, that should be coming very soon. Based on what you just said, is it possible I'll see it for Stello before I see it for G7? Because they you don't have the work, you know what I mean? Good, good, good question there, Scott. Um, I'm, we're not giving all the specifics out about Stello at this point in time, but you'll see it on G7 very soon. All right. If, if you say good question, I think I'm onto something. Hey, this is directly for me and other people too, but nightstand mode, now that Apple added that to the phone, like, please, that would be amazing. What about Delta at rate of change and seeing the, ne- you know, the last reading for followers? Like a lot of my stuff here is for, for like caregivers. They want to know more about customizable alarms for like school nurses or people who only part time take care of other people with type one. You know, the Delta is a big one for them. Basically, what they're saying is that the follow app when you're a caregiver, it shouldn't be different than the user app because there's a lot of things you have to do and you're blind to those in that situation. There's a, a pretty significant portfolio of updates we're going to make to follow. Um, we, you know, we, we've made some over time, but we have been primarily focused on G7, Dexcom 1, and Stello, getting the, the user apps updated but, and, and, and built out. But follow is such an important part of our ecosystem for our users. Um, and so I wanted, I, I've been pushing the team for more innovation in that area. And we, are, we have a portfolio of updates we're going to make. It includes a lot of the features that, that have been asked for over time. Um, and we'll put them out in, in order as fast as we can. But it is, it is an area where I want us to, to innovate more. We have a couple minutes left. And I have a couple of questions that I just know how you're going to answer them already. So I, I want to ask a bigger question. Okay. Is there an inflection point coming with CGM or is it just going to continue? Is it like an iPhone? Is it just going to get a little better every time I get one? Or is there go- is there a leap to be had? In terms of like uh, features, performance, all of that? Yeah, I mean, more performance, like stuff like, you know, listen, I love G7. My daughter, let, let me be clear. My daughter is at college right now with a 5.6 A1C. Like, that's pretty cool. If you asked me to come over there and wash the windows, I'd be happy to do it. So like, I'm happy. but. First day, couple of urgent lows that are fakes, yeah. you know, compression lows, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, like, is there a world where it just one day, you know what I mean? When they sit around and talk about AI, do you ever watch a guy sit and talk who really understands it? And he's trying to tell you that 10 years from now, you are not going to understand the world anymore. Like, is there a, is that happening for CGM in your mind, like in the future, or is it more of a steady as we go? I think so from a performance perspective, just on the accuracy and reliability of the products, there's still plenty of mileage to go. And you mentioned some of the the um, you know variability on the first day, compression lows, you know, sensor longevity, all of those things. It's interesting over the evolution of, of CGM, there's been, you know, big te- problems that we've tackled and solved, right? And those are uh, some of the problems that you mentioned, some of the challenges. That is something that we're very focused on, and you have a lot of very uh, passionate, excited team members about continuing to make the most accurate, the best CGM uh, ever, right? And so there's going to be more uh, progression there. I think where you're going to see um, the most, though, like large step change function type of innovation in CGM is what we start doing with the CGM information and how we start interacting with both physicians, caregivers, and the users um, I think that is where the user interface, what you're looking at with G7 today is going to be extremely different, you know, as the years go on. And we, you know, we're going to continue to to launch new platforms. Uh, you know, we've got G7 just recently launched, but, you know, obviously G8 is well underway. Uh, and so those are some of the innovations we're going to see. Um, it's just, it's, it's really exciting what we can do uh, mm-hmm. now that we have, you know, mobile platforms, mobile phones are pretty ubiquitous and the computing power. And then you got AI starting to come in and you start to think about how one of the things I talked about at CES was just the conversational nature of the data presentation to, say, a physician, um, helping them get down to the most important thing to discuss with a particular patient could be easily short circuited if you could just rapid fire answer their questions in a conversational format for for a particular user based on their real the, that user's data. Yeah, um, I think it's pretty exciting. Jake, two things. Are we talking about like. I was at this pizza joint last week. You remember last week, I'm going to eat the same thing again. Let's go like that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I don't think I've ever said this out loud on the podcast, but I've been logging the podcast into an 
an AI bot and a thousand hours worth of conversations about diabetes, you would be stunned at how accurately it answers like granular questions about diabetes. It's really, I can't wait. Like, and I know you guys have been at this for a long time. Like I know I have the, um, the honor of kind of seeing the big picture. Like I remember the first time Kevin said to me, I don't have diabetes, but I wore a CGM and I don't eat potatoes anymore. And now look where we are. You, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like really, like now people with type two diabetes, my brother's a great example, has already told me I wore that thing. And I thought, oh, I thought that was good for me. I didn't realize what it was doing to me in the background. And that's, man, that's gotta be eight years ago that he said that to me, you know? So yeah. I know people need to be patient, but I remember when you guys started looking at data and I thought they're going to do something with that one day. So like, I mean, like, you know, you're not going to retire soon, are you, Jake? How, how much no, longer no, we got? No, you're good? No, okay. No. All right. Yeah, I'm good. No, All I'm right. still, this is my 20th year at Dexcom, but I'm not going anywhere. We got a good succession plan though. The guy under you knows what he's doing. Yeah. Oh yeah. We've okay. got a great CEO, great team. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. I don't want the ball getting dropped here. <laughs> 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 you know, when you decide it's time, you know what I'm saying? I really appreciate this. I should have you back on more frequently. We haven't done this nearly enough as we should have. Uh, so thank you very much. It was great, Scott. Really enjoyed our time. Take care. A huge thanks to U.S. Med for sponsoring this episode of the Juice Box podcast. Don't forget, usmed.com slash juice box. This is where we get our diabetes supplies from. You can as well. Use the link or call 888-721-1514. Use the link or call the number, get your free benefits check so that you can start getting your diabetes supplies the way we do from US Med. Having an easy to use and accurate blood glucose meter is just one click away. Contournext.com slash juice box. That's right. Today's episode is sponsored by the Contour Next Gen Blood Glucose Meter. Once there was a time when I just told people, if you want a low and stable A1C, just listen to the Juice Box podcast. But as the years went on and the podcast episodes grew, it became more and more difficult for people to listen to everyone. So I made the Diabetes Pro Tip series. This series is with me and Jenny Smith. Jenny is a certified diabetes care and education specialist. She's also a registered and licensed dietitian and a type one herself for over 30 years. And I, of course, am the father of a child who was diagnosed at age two in 2006. The Pro Tip series begins at episode 210 with an episode called Newly Diagnosed or Starting Over. And from there, all about MDI, pre-bolusing, insulin pumping, bumping and nudging, variables, exercise, illness, injury, surgeries, glucagon, long-term health, bumping and nudging, how to explain type one to your family, postpartum, honeymoon, transitioning, all about insulin, temp basils. These are all different episodes. Setting your basal insulin, fat and protein, pregnancy, the glycemic index and load, and so much more, like female hormones and weight loss. Head now to juiceboxpodcast.com. Go up in the menu at the top and click on Diabetes Pro Tip. Or if you're in the private Facebook group, there's a list of these episodes right in the featured tab. Find out how I help keep my daughter's A1C between 5'2 and 6'2 for the last 10 years without diet restrictions. Juiceboxpodcast.com. Start listening today. It's absolutely free. You can use the same continuous glucose monitor that Arden uses. All you have to do is go to Dexcom.com slash juicebox and get started today. If you're not already subscribed or following in your favorite audio app, please take the time now to do that. It really helps the show. And get those automatic downloads set up so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. The episode you just heard was professionally edited by Wrong Way Recording. WrongWayRecording.com